Welcome back to my van build. Before we get too excited and get into what this video is titled, and we move way out of my comfort zone, um, and seeing it's vlog 20, which is unbelievable, I thought we'll have a quick run through where the van is at. I've done a bit of work up over the last few days and uh, not filmed too much of it because it's all sort of bits and pieces, but let's, uh, let's run through where we're at. I'll talk you through what we're expecting to see in the next few videos. So, uh, Let's get into it. Let's have a run through. First thing you'll notice is the uh, the cupboard doors are fitted. I'm well chuffed with how they've come out. Jason's done a fantastic job of these. They look so, so good. As usual, I'm just waiting for bits. I'm waiting for the magnet catches to hold them back at the minute. They're obviously just flapping about, which is really annoying, but they look fantastic. Uh, we've made this one, so just got to fit that. I'm just waiting for the paint to go off. Yep, I've been painting again. The worktop, so I don't know if I showed you guys, but I got a big slab of live ed edge ash. Now there's a lovely lady across the road who's offered to make that whole worktop for me. She's gonna resin fill it. She's gonna varnish it and fit it, cut it all in around the cooker and the sink. So I'll do a whole separate video on that. That'll look fantastic. I really, really can't wait for that to go in because I think that'll really finish off, but that should be in the next couple of weeks. The drawers I've made and the doors I've made, I haven't made that at all, Jason's made. So we'll go through those in a bit. There's my uh, Truma Combi boiler, which is what this video is about. So we'll get that fitted and get all this little fitted in a little bit. So that's about what's new in here. Uh, let's go outside. So what should we start with? These are the drawers. Jason made them and I've painted them. So I'm just, the sun's shining and I'm lovely at the minute. So I'm just waiting for the paint to go off. These are like the drawer front. So they're the same layout, if you like, as my cupboard, same style. And then these will actually just go over top like that and then put a handle on it. And that will be my drawer. Same with that one. So that'll look really good. These are the cupboard doors. So those bits of ply there are going to be the inserts for these and then this, we just had to repaint it. This is the um, the other cupboard door with the mesh going in it, so that'll get fitted later on. So that is, that will, that and the uh, the worktop will finish the kitchen, so which is fantastic. Right, tanks. I've ordered a, this is the wastewater tank, this is the freshwater tank. The freshwater tank has got the cap, this is upside down. So I've ordered a cap for the wastewater tank, so I'm gonna get that fitted and that's the inlet, which is too small, so I've ordered an inch and a half inlet, but that'll be a whole other video. So I'm just waiting for those bits before I can do that. This is my LPG tank. Again, a whole other video to fit that. I'm waiting for some stone chip paint. So I'll respray it just to protect it a little bit. And then we'll do another video on fitting that. So this is all the stuff you've got to look forward to. So yeah, you've got a lot to look forward to. I've got a lot to look forward to. I'm hoping to go on a trip down to Cornwall and then straight out to Scotland in like two weeks time. So I'm desperately trying to get all this stuff you've just seen fitted. Hopefully the worktop will get fit. Oh yeah, the, the samples over there. So I've also ordered the cushions uh, for the seating area and I'm waiting for a price back for a mattress to be made. Yeah, so I'm hoping all that will be done in the next two weeks so I can get on a trip and it'd be great to actually film a trip in the van. If I can get it even nearly ready, it'd be great. So let's, uh, let's get into this, what this video is about and run through this boiler install because I'm no expert. I was pretty good with electrics, but now we are moving so far out of my comfort zone it's going to get pretty interesting so let's see how to do this thing shall we so this is it matruma combi 4e boiler now i did my fair share of research on how to heat the water and heat the van now i was going to go for the old school diesel heater but by the time you get a decent one of those they're six seven hundred quid and then i didn't want to get those hideous camping gas uh external boilers uh, to heat the water because they're just not suitable for inside the van and I was a little bit worried about it. So if you're off grid, that by far is your best option. Although it, that whole kit was like 1500 quid. So it's ridiculously expensive, but you pay for what you get, I guess. So in this video, I'm not going to do the water or the gas because I haven't got the tanks fitted. And when I get the tanks fitted, we'll, include, we'll, we'll um, incorporate them in those videos. So what I'm going to do is get it mounted to the ground I'm going to get the exhaust uh, drilled out the side of the van and I'm going to get all the uh, the ducts in, the air ducts. 
their heating ducts and i'm also going to get the dropout vent so i'm pretty lucky so with gas appliances in vans you need to put a dropout vent because lpg is heavier than air if anything leaks it drops out of the van doesn't fill the van up with gas so i'm pretty lucky where the gas cooker and my heater my combi boiler the only two gas appliances i have in the van are both next to each other so i'm going to stick one dropout vent i think this is inch and a half or two inch dropout vent and i'm just going to drill it probably through the floor there or here let's have a look underneath the van because it can't be anywhere near the exhaust i think the exhaust runs through here so i might stick it over there but we'll come to that so yep i'm going to drill these there's four of these there's four outputs on that again we'll come to this in a bit as we do it so i'm going to put one here i'm going to duct this is a duct in this is like 10 quid per 600 mil which is ridiculous and then i'm going to put another duct here and then to keep all the van heated the same, I'm also going to run another one into the garage area at the back and I'm going to run another one between the seats into the cab area out there. So first things first, what I'm going to do is because this is a bit tight to the floor and the ducts which are there are all a bit tight, I'm actually going to get a bit of ply and I'm going to mount this about an inch off the ground just to bring it all up a bit. Let's get this bit of ply in and uh, crack on. <clears throat> this i've put the floor in it just raised it up nicely so it's a nice height off the ground so things like the ducts there where the uh the air duct is going to go is now high enough above that board to sort of loop round and go where it needs to go it's also pulled far enough away from the back of the wall there's loads of room for it to breathe so the next job is that's where it's going to sit the next job is to drill a hole in the side of my van i hate drilling holes in the side of my van but if I had planned my build a little bit better, this would have been done a long time ago. So this is the flue. Obviously it sucks air in and then blows the, whatever, the gases out. Now this is a duct in, it's got to go in. And then this here has got to go on the outside of the van. Have fun watching me butcher the living daylights out of this cladding. So I don't get it right first time, then I'll make a mess in my cladding and I'll have to probably, I don't know, board over or something. So wish me luck. Oh, it's going to be painful. Here we go. So because this has to go like that and face upwards outside the van, I can't put it straight out. So it's either got to go over here somewhere or I've got to loop it over and stick it here. I think, I think I'll get away with doing that. So it keeps it all out of the way. Nothing's easy, is it? Nothing's ever easy. So let's get this done. That's 
solid on there. Let's get the big one on. Right, that's in and secured as you can see. Pain in the ass. So there's four outlets on that combi boiler and I've got four of these little fascia outlet thingy jobs. So I'm gonna take one outlet from the combi boiler to each one of these. So there'll be no joins or splits or anything if that makes sense. So each one will be direct. So uh, I'm gonna put one of these in the bulkhead of the cab. I'm gonna put one in the, down there, in the kitchen area, facing in. I'm gonna put another one, sorry, I'm a gimbal, that's why it's all probably shake, shaking up. My uh, gimbal's playing up, so it's probably why it's all a bit shaky. But the other one of these is gonna go down there. So that'll heat the main living area. And the fourth one will go in this bulkhead, but facing back into the garage area. So the whole van will be heated equally. So. I'm going to get these holes drilled where they're going to go and then we'll run that pipe work there um, where it needs to go. Hopefully once I've done that, my gimbal is charged and I won't have the shakiness. Woo! So uh, let's continue. Okay, got these in. Um, there's four outlets on this thing. There's two that side, and then there's two kind of at the back here, which is gonna be good fun. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and get this duct thing in. I've only got eight meters, which I'm not sure is enough, but I've got to run from here. I'm gonna run it along here, clip it under the bath. Probably should have done this before I put all the, uh, the paneling on, and then try and pick up. Oh, put my cooker there, that's a good idea, isn't it, Ben, eh? Um, yeah, so one there, and then another one down the bottom there. This is the ducting. Pretty flexible. Let's uh, see if we can get this in. It's kind of going right, isn't it? Um, a little bit of a pain in the ass, but hopefully I've got enough ducting to get it finished. So let's get it installed. Hopefully my gimbal will be back in action tomorrow, so I won't be so shaky. Um, ran out of ducting. I've only got like a two meter length left down there, and it's got to go right from there all the way under the bath to not that one, but the uh, the one in the garage area. So um, obviously got these ones in, which is good. So tomorrow. I think what we're going to do is get this floor vent drilled um, and get it wired in, I believe. So that will just leave the plumbing and the gas to do, which we can do in the next video, maybe, or the one after that. Who knows? So see ya tomorrow. It is now the next day. After a good night's sleep <laughs> and a bit of time to de-stress after yesterday's shenanigans, we'll try and get this boiler finished off. 
well, say finished off, I haven't got half the parts, so get it as far as we can. This is in no way a tutorial on how to fit one of these boilers. This is simply showing the world how I'm fitting mine, which might have been a mistake, to be honest, because uh, it's not going very well. But hey-ho, we shall carry on. So today we're going to try and get the electrical bits and pieces fitted, so get it wired in and um, get this hole drilled out on the floor. The plumbing will do in a We'll do like a plumbing video later on, so we'll get everything plumbed in in one go. Same with the gas, so let's, uh, let's see what there is to do today, shall we? Okay, plan of action today is get this vent drilled out into the floor. I need to have a look underneath it where it's going to go. The exhaust is here somewhere, so it can't go in there. It might have to just go in here or there somewhere, the dropout vent. So we'll do that. Um, I'm going to get the 240 uh, supply rigged up now that's not long enough to get into my fuse spur here so i'll have to through crimp it and heat shrink it so we'll do that um that's the pump that's nothing to do with it this here is the 12 volt supply to it so we'll get that rigged up the um little connection part i can't really see it very well is, is there we'll go through that in more detail in a bit and then this is my data connection or my ethernet or whatever it is but <laughs> it's not bloody long enough so I need to get an extension for that. So again, missing some parts. And also what I didn't think about was this is a temperature sensor for it, like a room temperature sensor. This here is the cable for it. Now that's supposed to go high up in the van somewhere, but it's a bit late for that. So I have no clue where that's gonna go. So wish me luck on that. I don't know, I don't know if I can fish up the wall or take it back round and try and coming up here would be the best place but oh it's gonna be a hell of an effort to get that up there now saying that i've done worse jobs so we shall uh crack on with the wiring and see how that goes wish me luck okay so the 12 volt is connected as you can see it's just some spay connectors so i've literally just crimped those on there and push them on as easy as that and then I secured the cable to that pipe just so it's not flapping around there is the thermostat connections here everything's like push connected which is great there's the the thermostat or the controller just like an rj45 connection there and what else is there i think that's that's about it and temperature center so that's that the 240 comes pre-flexed so this is just a bit of 1.5 heat resistant flex by the looks of it so all I'm gonna do, because it's not long enough to get to my spur, and I'll do that, which looks a bit ridiculous. I'm gonna through crimp. That's three quarts, 240. So I'm just gonna three through crimp that onto my bit of heat resistant flex I've got here, also 1.5 mil, and then clip it round, put a bit of heat shrink over the joint, clip it round, and then bring it up over and then into my fuse spur here. So that is the next job. Let's crack on. Okay, the wired in, clip lovely down the back there, there's the heat shrink, and then we've wired into this double pole switch. So it just comes in from that fuse board at the back into the top of this and then this double pole switch this is just a 20 amp double pole switch and then the output is just wired in obviously the outgoing side so this switch when i'm connected up to mains will be on the neon will light up and then that will give that bad boy 240 volts so that's that wired in just gotta push it back and screw it down there's the screws so next job is to try and work out how to wire this sensor in i think I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and fish it, I think, along the back with that copex and try and get, I'm gonna try and get it up here, but we'll see, we'll see. So get on with this and then all I've got to do then is get that dropout vent done and then the last bit of ducting and it's in. Obviously not the water and gas yet. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> Just trying to work, man. Just trying, Just trying to get to on. Hey, what you what you feeding? Just trying to, <laughs> <laughs> just trying to provide. For my <laughs> right, Ben's arrived, and he's going to give me a hand to drill this uh, hole out on the floor and put this temperature sensor in. 
Now, a very detailed conversation between us two has decided that we're going to put this up here because we thought it's high up, it's out of the way, and it's close to the door, the cold spot, as Ben mentioned. So that's where it's going to go. Now, to do that, we're going to run this cable, which just plugs into the combi boiler down there. My, my gimbal stopped playing up. Um, and we're going to run it around the back with these cables here. I'll get the cooker out again. And then run it up the wall behind and then plumb it into the wall there. So, Benef, here he is. Oh, hello, lovely angle. You probably just got me on. Yo, ass. <laughs> Ben's taking the seat out because we're going to take this bit of ply off, get the cable in, fish it up the wall that away. So, that is the plan of action. Then, once we've done that, We'll, uh, we'll get this vent drilled in the floor down there somewhere. So let's, uh, let's get this smashed in. Great. <laughs> it's in. So Ben's taken the back apart, or the front apart, whichever way you look at it, and then we've drilled a hole here, ran the cable. It's like a pre-made cable along here. And then there's only, like everything's spay connectors on this, which is great. So they just plug into these two terminals. I can't get my camera around there, so it's a bit rubbish, but there's only two terminals for it to go onto. So that's now connected up. The only thing that leaves wiring wise on the boiler is this control or data cable, which is obviously not long enough. So I'll get a connector for that. And that literally just plugs in to these like RJ45 connectors here. There's one, there's one there, which it goes into. So that's that. Next job, Ben and I are gonna drill this, uh, wherever it's gone, oh, this hole gone? in the floor. <laughs> where has it gone? <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna drill a hole down here somewhere, the vent, um, as I said before, the exhaust runs here somewhere, so we need to have a bit of a measure up and try and work out where it's gonna come out. But we'll drill a pilot hole down, and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Where has it gone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mounted up, electrics are all done, the little control cable, this little RJ11 connector from the control panel will be in tomorrow, hopefully. The uh, I've ordered the extension cable from Amazon, so that'll finish that off. I've ordered the extra bit of ducting so I can get that in the next couple of days, but you've seen me install those, so it's just one more to go in. All the electrics are done, it's all connected up, which is great. You saw me drill the dropout vent. Now when I went through the floor, I gave it a clean up with a file, and then I sprayed it with some under seal, once that goes off, uh, probably tomorrow, I will seal around the, the tube, if you like, with some sicker flex just to really seal it up to make sure it's watertight, because obviously this is brilliant stuff. Um, so that kind of concludes that vlog, really. It's been a bit of a pain in the ass to film this one, because I've had issues with cameras and I've been getting a bit stressed out with it, but so it's probably not the best install of a, of a commie boiler you've ever seen, probably the worst, but it's in and hopefully it works. I mean, it looks right to me. It's not going anywhere. So that concludes the vlog. So thanks everyone for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, then why not? As usual, why haven't you subscribed? Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the like button because it helps me. Next vlog will be underneath the van. I'm not sure yet. It'll either be the LPG tanks or the water tanks, uh, whichever, I'm waiting for bits for both of them, as I said earlier, so it could be either one of them. But next uh, couple of vlogs, get under the van, get dirty, and uh, it's getting going now, it's getting exciting. So thanks again for watching, see you in the next one.